We know that innovation in business is key for economic growth in low-income countries. Manpower is an essential component of innovation creation, yet SME owners in these countries often face limited knowledge and skills, challenging their employees to be innovative. Research conducted by Tilburg University, Radboud University Nijmegen, in collaboration with African academic institutes, explores how to understand the critical internal factors in SMEs in sub-Saharan Africa and how innovativeness and creativity could be strengthened. Let's take a look at the stone manufacturers in Uganda, a sanitary business in Kenya and palm product company in Uganda to see how they operate internally to be innovative. Chogo Mazinga is a stone veneering company. We cut eight different types of rocks. And from those eight different types of rocks, uh, we have uh, about 16 designs. First and foremost, uh, Chogo Mazinga stands for quality. Every piece of stone that comes out of this factory has passed so many hands to get out there. The seniority of organization starts with the board of directors, then it comes to the general manager, myself, and then we have got a line managers who are organized in the different departments. Innovation lies with the, every person in the, in, the, in the company. And the way we are organized in the office, thankfully, we've had um, a very low turnover of the stuff that we put on. And I've been a worker before, <laughs> so I know how one must be treated in order to, to appreciate the job that he has. We provide them 100%. We have to give him meals, and we, they have insurance, and then we also give them training. Through that, that inclusive nature of our treatment for an employee, we have had a very low turnover. As seen through the stone veneer case, management innovations in terms of organizational structure and HR policy result in business growth. However, this is a rare case. The research suggests a key factor prohibiting companies from growing is a lack of internal management skills and structure. A vital component of internal management is giving employees a sense of engagement. This can come through responsibility of quality control, like in the Stone Company, but also through personal needs taken into consideration. Let's take a look at Palmi in Kenya, a woman-owned business as an example. Before Palmi, I was a distributor for a soft drink company, and I was not happy selling other people's products. And I felt I could grow my own products and fly with it. I wanted to provide employment to women I was interacting with in my community who could not get employment. Palmi is innovative because we created a platform where women could come and work and feed their families. The impact is that the mothers we work with we were able to create two shifts per day because we saw women cannot be committed a whole day because they need to go back and take care of their families. For our women, we are, we are creating a policy that when they don't have nannies at home, we can allow them to come with their children to work. Running Palmi as my own business was not easy at the beginning, especially because People have got this feeling of you cannot be ruled by a woman. I now find it easy because I work with women. I feel their problems and so I'm able to help them. Promoting gender diversity works in every society, regardless of cultural patterns. Palmi highlights how innovative human resources results in creativity and innovation from more motivated staff who have peace of mind that flexible working hours enable a better quality of life for their families. 
the research underlines that an inclusive rather than a top-down management style is effective in strengthening innovativeness within a company. Let's go to Uganda to see how one entrepreneur really developed an original idea into multiple products through an inclusive approach with staff. Uh, the market sector we're uh, servicing is uh, the Africans in the diaspora. I, I found this niche when I found myself in Europe and uh, trying to eat like the way I was eating in Africa uh, and the difficulty at the times. The product we process are taking raw materials from the farm gate like palm fruits and then washing, pounding, into creams and then canning, sterilizing and then labeling into a finished product that is packed in boxes for export. We have introduced uh, the equipment that does the pounding, the, the straining and then also the canning and sterilization. For instance, formerly we were packing our powdered products manually. I mean we fill them by hand and then seal them up Today we have foam fill and seal machines. Every morning we, we meet as a team <laughs> to pray in the first place and also to relate to one another. And then in development of products also, I mean, it's, it's a teamwork. I mean, we take ideas right from the factory floor up, regardless of who brings the idea. So as part of our growth strategy, every member of staff matters that staff, they operate the, 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 the equipment, they, they, they drive the whole system daily. And so if they are part of it, they contribute to the vision. Everybody talks to everybody. I mean, it's not as if I am right up there, I'm not unreachable, no. Because it's about human beings. We've seen that internal capabilities can really foster innovation and essentially are developing ideas that work within that specific company. Hardware and machinery also help boost internal capabilities. Yet the research stresses the importance of the managerial skills of the owner. This suggests SME owners may employ new structural changes before technological investments. This also has implications for other bodies such as governments who should make sure managerial knowledge is part of the professional education.